All right. So, um, uh, Yaron, we are here today with Yaron Singer. Um, would you be able to introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, hi, Olivia, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so, yeah. So, my name is Yaron Singer. I um, I'm currently uh, I'm currently a uh, uh, VP of AI and security uh, at Cisco. Um, and uh, before that, I was uh, I was CEO and co-founder uh, at, at our company called Robust Intelligence, which got acquired by Cisco. Uh, and um, but even before that, I was a uh, Gordon McKay Professor of uh, Computer Science and Applied Math at, at Harvard. And I suspect that this is you know uh, a large reason why uh, why why I got you know I have the privilege of of of, uh, of, of talking to Olivia and all of you guys here. Um, yeah, where I spent, you know, so, so, you know, I, I, I spent like, uh, 10 wonderful years, uh, you know, at Harvard and, uh, yeah, very much, uh, you know, still staying in touch with, uh, with, uh, with folks and, and, you know, kind of, uh, involved in the community. So super happy to be here. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, all right. So, so AI, um, you know, obviously a lot to be said, um, and specifically AI and security. So, you know, this is what you've studied and this is what you currently work on, right? Um, so, you know, this conversation is is sort of about that broadly. Um, so how how do AI models use inputs? How does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so first of all, like, you know, maybe there is like, a, I'll now go into professor mode. So um, <laughs> there is that, you know, the, the sort of the question of, you know, so let's let's sort of like ask ourselves a little bit like kind of what is an AI model? So, you know, that that, um, you know, the answer to that question kind of, you know, has uh, has has evolved a little bit, you know, since, uh, you know, when, if we're kind of like thinking about this, like, you know, um, maybe 10 years ago uh, versus now. So uh, 10 years ago, we, we would think of, you know, what we kind of a lot of times think about AI, we, we used to call it kind of machine learning. And, um, and, and, the, and basically, the models were um, what, a, what a machine learning model would do is it would look at, you know, it would look at a uh, at, at, a, at a data point, right? And then it would, it would uh, a lot of times what it would do is typically it would, it would um, you know, uh, give you some, like uh, the, the output of that, you know, for that data point would, would oftentimes just be a number. So specifically, you know, sort of like, you know, you could, you know, uh, uh, you could look at, for example, um, somebody's like kind of, uh, you know, you could look at an input, which would be kind of some information about like medical record. And then you can like, you know, you use a machine learning model to kind of like make a prediction for, um, you know, the likelihood of this person uh, being hospitalized in the next in the next year. Right. Or, you know, you can look at like some things that are a little bit, you know, like kind of um, what we all know, kind of spam filters, things like that. Uh, so, you know, in that case, uh, the input would be the data point what could be the email, the content of the email. And then uh, you'd feed that into an AI model. And then the output of that would just be, um, you know, the likelihood that, you know, that specific email is spam. So that's kind of like the more traditional uh, AI. Um, and what have what kind of like has changed, I think, in the past, maybe I think kind of maybe two and a half years is the um, is the emergence of what we call generative AI. So these are uh, kind of like we all know this is like models like uh, like ChatGPT that now it's not only that, you know, they, they take input. If we're thinking about kind of like the example of like uh, email spam, they, they kind of take uh, input that is text kind of like an email. Um, but now what they do is they don't only return a probability, but they actually take some action, right? So um, for, uh, you know, for, for generative AI, they would take like input, which be which would be text, right? But the output is, you know, can be something like, you know, like it can be information or it can actually be, be an action. So information that, you know, the generative AI can return to you is like, you know, it can actually kind of like find information online for you. It can it maybe find information from your, uh, you know, maybe from, you know, from your laptop or it can find information from, you know, from a Dropbox folder uh, and, uh, and, and basically give you a response. Great. So there's a lot of potential there for something to go wrong, isn't there? Sounds like a lot, even just from what you said. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, exactly. So when when we started, you know, robust intelligence, um, um, we like kind of what, what we saw is we saw that there's a lot of vulnerability in that process of kind of a machine learning or, you know, kind of like AI in the sense that um, very, very small changes. And, you know, for thinking about like kind of an example of an email, like very, very small changes in text could lead to like, you know, fooling the model to thinking in, in, in that case that, you know, the email is not spam or, you know, what have you. And that was a big problem because we saw more and more systems that were dependent on, you know, an AI for their inputs. Um, somehow with ChatGPT kind of creates the perfect storm for a company like Robust Intelligence because 
uh, you know, now that system is is already in place. So specifically, like, you know, with, uh, you know, with something like ChatGPT, like, you know, very, very small changes in, you know, kind of like in, in, um, in the input can actually lead to like kind of different outcomes from, you know, that, that what, what the model will do. So specifically, like, um, you can kind of like give it instructions where now you're, you know, you know you're extracting data, uh, you know, from the model or you're extracting data that you shouldn't be able to extract uh, from different sources. Or you can actually have the model, you know, take actions on your behalf and, you know, you can basically give it instructions and now uh, the model can maybe like summarize data or summarize information and now post it online somewhere. Right. So so somehow that that. Um, the risk potential uh, grows uh, pretty dramatically, I think, when we're thinking about the world uh, of generative AI versus kind of the the old world where, you know, you, you'd have some systems that are dependent on it. So these are all these AI vulnerabilities that you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. So that those are the AI vulnerabilities. So um, so the, you know, kind of like a vulnerability of, of, of an AI model or an AI system is basically um, all the all the abilities to feed input um, in, in in a way that um, that basically kind of like tricks or fools the model uh, into doing things that it's not supposed to do. Okay. So how does that how does that play out in you know spaces like healthcare, insurance, um, automotive, like all of these pretty high risk industries where you know having vulnerable models that are being actively used as is pretty problematic, right? It's very dangerous, even. Well, we think so. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. So so it, it, you know it, it it ranges, and you know I kind of like um, it, it. You know, there's there's kind of like an entire scope of things. So if you're thinking about like you know uh, t you know if you're if you're a healthcare company and now you have uh, maybe now you're releasing a chatbot, then regulation says that you know typically that chatbot would not be able to give any medical advice or you know to uh, you know to, to people who are using that chatbot. So, you know, the, the ability, you know, it could go from, you know, kind of like small, you know, relatively feels like kind of simple things so that you can uh, put in input that would give you medical advice and therefore, you know, um, kind of uh, be against regulation. Same with uh, financial institutions, like if they're putting up a chatbot, then they know that, you know, the chatbot is not supposed to give financial advice. So again, you can kind of like break these models, um, but actually kind of goes into kind of deeper where you can actually... Um, you, you can actually kind of create these, um, uh, these you know, these prompts or these inputs uh, to these AI models in a way that will basically have these models uh, give you the data that they were trained on. Uh, so basically it can now kind of uh, extract, you know, data that lives inside the organization that, you know, that the users or, or who, you know, what have you are not supposed to be exposed to. Um, other things that, you know, could do is like, uh, other kind of like types of vulnerabilities are again, you can kind of like give all these types of instructions that, you know, basically kind of take data from like different sources that it's not supposed to kind of get access to and then uh, kind of like post it on the, you know, on, on the web and different different kind of places. So um, there, there's a whole range of, uh, of, of uh, kind of like potential, you know, risks and, and bad things that could happen. Right. Um, what are some like examples of some of that occurring? So yeah, so you know, um, in 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 the robust intelligence days, uh, uh, we would see you know you'd see like kind of different things, right? So um, you would see things that some of them were kind of um, uh, some of them were you know kind of like benign, and then some of them a little bit more adversarial. Um, so some of the more benign things, what one of the one of the examples that we saw is we saw this with a Fortune 100 company, um, where you know what they did is they. You know, they they took a they they took a you know an AI model that was open sourced, and then what they did is they fine tuned that model. And you know, with, with fine tuning that model, basically, it just means that you're you know, you're kind of like um, uh, you know changing the configurations of the model a little bit. And um, and what they did is they they changed the configurations of the model so that it it's uh, it, it adapts to the type of data that they had. And then kind of in in doing that, what actually what actually happened was that. Um, the internal guardrails of the models broke, and uh, and what that means is it means that now kind of they created this sort of you know um, the, this model that was you know extremely racist you know uh, and uh, and and it was, uh, it was it was pretty bad and that was kind of an example of just like you know kind of like benign behavior where right? where you know developers had no kind of ill intent right but all of a sudden they were gonna you know they 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 ended up 
accidentally creating a model that you know this company was going to release that was you know that was a uh, you know that was that was very bad. Right. Um, other other examples, you know, we see kind of um, um, we see uh, kind of a lot of uh, data extraction and kind of like stealing, kind of like uh, stealing data, or in some cases, kind of like uh, stealing some kind of like properties of of, of the model itself. So um, you see kind of the, 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 there are quite a few kind of like bad things uh, that right. you see out there. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, especially in healthcare, there are like some examples of, you know, AI vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities excuse me, in healthcare, um, you know, leading to some bad patient outcomes or, you know, the use of patient data in a negative way or... Yeah, I think I think that's um, you know those those are things that are honestly like they are very concerning, right? Um, because um, you know again, if we're talking about like this sort of this this process of, of of training models, right? Or you know, kind of like we can think about that as configuration. The way that that happens is it happens using the data that the organization has, right? So you know now, kind of like what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of companies who are kind of like facing this dilemma. You know, on the one hand, they're saying, well. You know, we we have a lot of data here. You know that that is a uh, and that and, and that's a you know that that can give us like a you know a business advantage, right? Um, if we if we have you know these AI models that are using uh, they're using our data, um, or even you know like uh, you know we we have this we we have this data here and we can basically customize like our models according to the data you know for the benefit of you know um, of our customers, right? But but you know like uh, the with with all these vulnerabilities and, and the potential kind of like you know privacy uh you know concerns and uh and and, and data leakage that becomes a huge you know that, that becomes a huge problem so so businesses like have to you know first of all they need to be educated about um about the kind of like the the safety of ai the safety of these of, uh, of these models like kind of the safety of, of data of you know and you know of their patients or their customers right and then kind of like they need to, you know, see what are the appropriate guardrails and what are the right decisions that they can make if they want to release these models. Right. Um, so, you know, how common is it that that companies at the moment have any sort of validation techniques? Does that exist aside um, from, you know, what you offer? Yeah, that's right. Um, so when we started, it didn't exist. Um, you okay. Know, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, so one of the things that we did, uh, I think, at Robust Intelligence is we. You know, we pioneered. You know, so, you know, uh, you know, we 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 pioneered uh, um, both the the validation as well as uh, what we're thinking now. Now what we're calling kind of the like guardrails for for models. Uh, so we used to call that uh, at robust intelligence. We called it AI firewall. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, uh, which can you know so. Uh, can get confusing uh, with uh, networking firewalls and what have you, but. Um, yeah, um, but but validation it was was not a uh, was, was not something common that you know that the people had done. We thought that it's something that uh, you know is, is 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 necessary, and that's kind of why it's been a um, you know something that was was a, a kind of a pretty major in our product. And I think I want to say that eighty or eighty five percent, if not more, of our revenue actually came from uh, from validation. So yeah, it's uh, uh now now I think it's uh you know now now I think it's uh it's big. So well, it's yeah. very exciting, um, and hopefully very helpful as well. Um, all right. So one last question, um, and sort of a question that at least I think about a lot. Um, you know, will sort of any of these security issues ever be solved? Is that a meaningful question, or is this sort of like always a cat and mouse game where you know as the technology evolves, so will sort of the techniques for for you know adversarial attacks the techniques for hacking the techniques for manipulating data you know is that ever is that just the principle essentially as a reflection of of human behavior in a way um you know is there a way that that can ever be solved or um i guess that would be your objective but what do you really think yeah uh well um i uh um you know, there. You know, I, I think here it's like you know, it, it's one of those cases where it's like kind of what what do you like you know um, what do you really think is also kind of like right. what works a little bit in your favor, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. you know, I, I think unfortunately for you know, like um, I, I think for for society, uh, security in general, I think not only of AI is never going to be you know kind of quote unquote solved, 
Um, but I mean, that, that question has, you know, that question has a lot of merit because like, you know, especially when we're, when we're looking at this from an academic lens, you know, there are a lot of things, you know, there's like unbelievable fundamental work that, you know, that, that we're doing in computer science and, you know, and applied math on, you know, cryptography, right. Uh, you know, traditional cryptography, you know, now kind of like, you know, there's like quantum cryptography, right. But, but basically it's an entire field that's like devoted to giving like, you know, provable guarantees, right. For you know, for for safety, security, you know, of data, security of computation, right? So, um, you know, so there is there is, um, um, so so there are like kind of very very strong foundations, you know, that that one can you know rely on, you know, to know like kind of what are the things that um, we we almost kind of like can know for sure that uh, uh, you know uh, basically know for sure like kind of where 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 we have um, you know information security. However, in the world of like just general security, there, there are a lot of things that just happen, you know, for, you know, for kind of like odd reasons. Like, you know, there's like a, you know, there's a, you know, a, a new so a new version of software comes out and somebody, you know, there, somebody forgets to like do an update for some library or there's a misconfiguration, you know, in, in a cloud, you know, that all, all these kinds of things that uh, a lot of them kind of like, you know, a lot of times kind of like depend on kind of like human behavior or sort of like kind of all these sort of like kind of uh, organizational gaps and what have you they're the ones that kind of invite um uh kind of like you, you know like kind of uh you know they, they sort of like introduce risk and then this is this is oftentimes like how um you know you how, can't perfect uh, the real world you can't perfect you the real world can't. yeah I, now i with AI, I think that's like different scale because like the technology itself is very sensitive and very vulnerable so it's not only kind of the human behavior um so I think, uh, and, and the, the technology like evolves at breakneck pace. So it's also like kind of very, very difficult to kind of like constantly kind of patch it. And then, um, and then, yeah. And then in addition, when you're thinking about capabilities of like bad actors, like with AI, like kind of uh, now kind of like how they can basically scale a lot of like kind of these, uh, uh, these exploits, then, um, then that, that just kind of becomes, uh, you know, the, the problem I think kind of becomes even more severe. Do you think AI makes things more secure or more vulnerable in the long term for that I think exact reason? More vulnerable. Well, more vulnerable. Okay. Right. I mean, but you know, it's like uh, I, I think it's like with a lot of technologies. Like you know, do we think right. that like you know, introduction of you know of, of you know of a of, of cars or vehicles or like on a right. airplane? I don't know that it makes the you know a world more secure necessarily. It just means but, that you can go to Cancun tomorrow if you want to. But exactly, but right. it's sort of like you know, but but it opens up you know kind of the possibilities, of possibilities right? And as society, we're sort of like looking at those trade offs and we we accept them. So I think that's that's unfortunately that's just going to be all well, not fortunately and for unfortunately, you know, it's like it's going to be the case like, you know, AI is going to introduce, you know, more risk. I think that, you know, some we'll, we'll accept some of it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll protect whatever we can. Uh, and, you know, like, you know, people like me, if we can't, we'll go back to our caves. And if we can, we'll go back to our caves, which, you know, sometimes, you know, for some is, is also a good, you know, is a good, uh, good option. solution. It's the alternative solution. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much for your time. Um, really appreciate it. And, you know, so unbelievably fascinating and, and important. And, you know, we'll be changing every single day, which I'm sure is both exciting and exhausting to keep up with. So um, definitely a moving target. Um, thank you again. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks.